So I get asked this all the time, and it's something that is directly related to you because you're always wondering, hey, what? when does it actually click? Or when does things become easier in Linux than Windows or Mac? And it's this kind of a really exponential growth curve when it comes to mastery of Linux. And when I say mastery, I'm not talking about the traditional four stages of mastery, even though I'll touch on it. It's really getting past the hump of just being competent to the point where you're, you're pretty decent at using it. Because once you become decent at using it, you get to that third stage, so to speak, everything just kind of the whole world opens up to you. And then you can just use that computer however you want, no matter what distro you're on, no matter what's going on. And it is amazing. But I wanted to talk about each one of these, these first three tiers, I call them. And really, I wanted to go over what the experience is like and how you move from one to the next. Because I think too many people get caught up in a tier and literally think they just belong there and just keep doing the wrong things over and over and never really pushing forward or breaking through to the next thing. And then they end up just moving back to Windows or Mac. And I don't want that to happen. So let's talk about what it looks like when it comes to progression of learning in Linux. So when it comes to mastery of any subject, there's four distinct levels that you really go through. No matter what you're learning, um, typically it requires uh, you to repeat and have a lot of experience in a certain thing before you can actually master it. And those four levels are no voice or novice. When you first start at something, you're brand new, you don't know anything, but you don't even know what you don't know. So that's how new you are. Most Linux users fall into this category. The second one is somebody that is competent, they can do basic tasks, and they pretty much know what they don't know. And I would say probably lump another good chunk of Linux users into this realm. Three is someone that's probably considered an expert. They're not necessarily a master of the subject, but I would say they're an expert and they know a whole host of things, a lot, but they're still always little bit more to learn and then finally the final stage which is basically a master and I'm not even going to address this because honestly I don't even know if one exists in the world when it comes to Linux it's just such a vast topic that I don't know anybody I would even consider a master I would consider like Linus Torvalds a master of the Linux kernel but he, he would be almost pretty much a, a novice when it comes to desktop environments and things like that because he really just doesn't use them on a daily basis from my understanding. Uh, so it's, it's hilarious to see all these different pieces, but uh, I wanted to just kind of go over these first levels and really start with number one, the novice, uh, the distro hopper is what I'm going to call this. This is someone that brand new to Linux, so used to Windows and Mac that they come over and they're just like, okay, just give me everything, make it work perfectly. Uh, I'm just going to try a whole bunch of distros. And some people never make it past this level, and that's totally okay. And honestly, there's some people that hit this level, and it pretty much does everything they want it to, and they don't really want to go past it. So a good example of this user that can stay on level one as a novice, and it works just fine, I would say my mother-in-law. She uses her computer mainly to browse the internet. In that use case scenario, there's not much her computer is doing, so it's fine that she just stays at that base level. And Linux itself is very, very stable, so again, she can just stay here forever, but if you want to learn and be more of a power user, let's say you really are heavy into like gaming and other uses for your computer, you can't really stay on this first tier and still be satisfied in a Linux environment, at least not yet. Uh, each year Linux gets better and better to where noobs or these n novices that can easily come to Linux and, and function more and more. So right now though, I would say really, uh, for the noobs category, I will just go ahead and say, yeah, very few and, and they're really no power users can stay on this level. You need to expand past that and stop distro hopping and get more into actually understanding what goes into a Linux distro. Um, so you can customize it to fit any shortcomings you have. So let's go past this first stage of mas mastery and go into the next one, which is being competent in, in the actual system. I would say probably about 
20 to 30% of Linux users probably fall into this category. And I'm talking just Linux desktop users here. And uh, that's where someone can easily switch out the desktop environment. They could switch out programs, like let's say they don't like their file browser, and let's say they want to go from Nautilus to Dolphin. They, can, they know those packages, and they understand the basics of how to actually just kind of get around and make minor modifications. But they'll typically run into more problems. Let's say they're trying to install a specific device and it doesn't work properly or the drivers uh, don't load right or the module doesn't tie in because they might not be using a DKMS kernel and, and they're using DKMS modules to try and tack it on. I mean, there's, there's a lot of moving factors here, but the competent uh, user is someone that really can kind of tweak things, but not go 100% and just really start from a command line and then just really start building exactly what they want. But the, what they can do is take a base install and do modifications and customize it to where they get pretty much what they need and they might run into the weeds a little bit. But for most issues, they're able to solve and move forward. And then finally, I'm going to just say probably the, the experienced user is the third tier. This is where I'd probably find myself. I don't consider myself a master uh, or that, that expert level, the very top tier, because honestly, I don't put anybody in this top tier um, because there's so much to learn in Linux. It's just such a vast uh, knowledge array. And, and I'm cognizant of the things I don't know still in Linux. And that's the thing that... Uh, how to really break through these tiers is mainly just figuring out the things that you want to do and how other people have accomplished them. So I would say really the base level for an experienced user, is someone that can work from a command line or a terminal and then build whatever they want. And whether it's a graphic user interface or Go ahead and install a desktop environment and then make it their own. Or just say, forget the desktop environment. I'm just going to edit all the config files myself and then just throw a tiling window manager on top of it. That's also okay. But typically, the, the experienced user would fall into this realm. And this is where it gets really interesting. So I just wanted to kind of give a little base level of what we're looking at here. And overall, these levels to really move from one to the next... I you really need to know what you don't know. And why so many people get stuck on that first level is they just don't know any better. And that's what I try and do on the channel is to kind of do that. So some upcoming videos is mainly me going over some of the desktop environments because this is really the second level. And if you are stuck distro hopping, a lot of times you can break yourself of this habit. One, understanding how to properly distro hop without having hours long reinstall, reauthenticating, and trying to log back into all your apps and move your windows around. That's all mainly for your Windows users and things like that. On Linux, it makes it a lot easier to move from one to the next. So uh, by all means, learn how to properly distro hop in that first tier, and that'll help you kind of start pushing you towards that second tier. And then the next is really to explore all the desktop environments Find which one suits your workflow. Some people are, are known people. Some people are KDE. Some people are Cinnamon. Some people are XFCE. It just depends on you. So what I say is try them all and uh, kind of jump between desktop environments. This is more of a desktop environment hopper. If that's really a thing, I'm going to make it a thing. Instead of calling people distro hoppers, I'm going to call them desktop environment hoppers. And these are your com competent users that can easily switch between desktop environments without actually breaking their system or having to install a completely new distro. And this is where I kind of want to push a lot more users from that first level to, hey, let's pimp out your machine and kind of push it up into that desktop environment level. And then also uh, just kind of modifying things. So that's where you, you kind of go to for a second level is learning that process. And then for the last final level, a lot of people would say, oh, I'll just start with Arch Linux and then build on top of that. I'd say that's a good way to break into it, but I also want to give alternative paths because some people really don't like Arch. And if that's you, by all means, stick on Debian, but there's ways to really break into that third tier, even if you're a hardcore Debian user. And that is simply, well, modify your desktop environments, rip them apart. You can change KDE to use i3 window manager if you want and rip out KWIN and 
use a window manager instead of KWIN. I mean, there's a lot of different things you can do to really elevate your skills, but really exploring the tiling window managers, but also um, kind of modifying your system in such a way you don't necessarily need the desktop environment anymore. Really uh, breaking free of those uh, limitations and learning how to directly edit like X11, doing X11.com files. I actually did a video on that, uh, which I'll link up here where you can edit the comp files so it auto adjusts all your monitors so you never have to pull up monitors and display settings ever again on your computer. It'll always just set it to that config file and whatever desktop environment or whatever window manager you're on, it's always just perfect. Always the right refresh rate, always the right resolution, always in the right spot for you dual monitor users. All this is great. So that's how you break through these levels. And I wanted to give a progression for mainly the noobs out there, just because it's hard to know what you need to learn if you don't even know what you don't know. And this hopefully gives some kind of basis for what you don't know. And I wanted to kind of just make this to help people kind of break through that path and be able to customize their system more. And uh, to do something like that, I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description for my website, ChrisTitus.com. I've made a couple posts, so check on the description, and I'll try and do a top comment uh, sometime later today after this video premieres. And uh, you could click on those links to learn all the different aspects of Linux, where to go to really customize whatever distro you're on, and then kind of uh, expand into the desktop environment realm. So with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.